Types by that. We are live streaming, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome to a council public meeting for Wednesday, December the 2nd. Um, it's a, it's a opening time of 6.30 p.m. that we've been working for and hope to have everybody here. We're very we'll finished through the whole process. This is a public hearing. So if a person or public body does not make a moral submission at a public meeting or make written submission to the city of Richmond Hill in respect of a proposed official plan amendment, zoning bylaw amendment and or plan of subdivision or condominium, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the city council to the local planning appeal tribunal. It may not be added to as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there is a reasonable ground to do so. So with that, thank you, Councilor Munch. So we're ready to, to roll here. I will say at this point in time, uh, we've gone through, we have delegations here and we have presentations from the staff that will be uh, speaking to us. So can I have a motion to adopt the agenda before us tonight, please? Thank you, Councillor Sterling, Councillor uh, West. Sorry, I should be able to see you better. I don't know why. And also uh, all those in favor, opposed? That's carried, thank you. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest uh, or general nature thereof, members of council? Seeing none, Mr. Clerk. So our scheduled business is uh, SRP uh, 120009, request for comments on expanded permission, permissions for additional residential units. And we have a presentation from members of uh, our planning. Um, and we have uh, Chun Chu of planning policy and Ferdi Tonoyolo as development planning, and I'll leave it in their hands. Sir, madam, <laughs> whoever's. Thank you, Mayor Barrow. Yeah, thank you. Good evening, councillors, and everyone who is joining us for this meeting. This presentation will be delivered by the policy planning team and the development zoning team. Today, we are presenting the proposed official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment on additional residential units, also known as secondary suites. These amendments are initiated by the city. Could I have the next slide, please, Brian? Thank you. In today's presentation, we'll start with the purpose for today's meeting, then we'll speak to the background context for the proposed official plan amendment and the zoning bylaw amendment, and we'll provide a high level summary of the proposed amendments. Finally, this will be followed by next steps and recommendations from staff. Next slide, please. The purpose of today's meeting is to provide information to city council and the public on the proposed official plan amendment 23 which I'll now refer to as OPA 23. The purpose is also to introduce the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. The proposed amendments will expand the existing permissions of additional residential units. These additional residential units are currently referred to as secondary suites in our existing official plan. Next slide, please. Sorry, my apologies. OPA 23 proposes to permit on a citywide basis two additional residential units on any lot that contains a single detached, semi-detached or townhouse dwelling. These three mentioned dwelling types are also known as ground related housing because they typically have access to a front and backyard. 
The additional residential units are permitted inside the ground related houses and in a structure that is accessory to the ground related houses on the same lot. This would effectively allow up to three dwelling units on a lot, one being the primary dwelling, another being the additional residential unit inside the primary dwelling, and the third being another additional residential unit in the structure that is accessory to the primary dwelling. The associated zoning bylaw amendment will implement the policies of OPA 23. Next slide, please. Why is the city initiating OPA 23 and its associated zoning bylaw amendment? It's because we are mandated by the province to do so. Over the past five years, the government of Ontario has declared that we are in a housing crisis. In response, the province passed Bill 108, the More Homes, More Choice Act. This legislation amended the Planning Act and other regulations to require municipalities to update their official plans in order to permit additional residential units in ground-related houses and in structures accessory to these houses, which effectively allows up to a total of three dwelling units on a lot. At the local level, the City of Richmond Hill has been working with SHS Consulting to address the housing crisis by undertaking an affordable housing strategy. This strategy has identified additional residential units as means for affordable housing. They are a good source of affordable rental housing. From a demand perspective, city staff has received many inquiries about development approvals for additional residential units. So there is quite a demand for this type of housing. With all of these changes brought on by provincial legislation and market demand, the city has proactively engaged GLADKEY planning consultants to conduct, to conduct a jurisdictional scan and research on best practices for implementing additional residential units. The proposed OPA 23 and the zoning bylaw amendment draws from these best practices. Next slide, please. In the next couple of slides, we'll summarize the contents of the proposed OPA 23 and the zoning bylaw amendment. OPA 23 will replace the definition of secondary suites with additional residential units. The definition will be updated to include additional residential units, both inside a ground related house and also in a structure that is accessory to the ground related house. OPA 23 will also clarify that ground related housing means a single detached, a semi detached and a townhouse. Generally, OPA 23 permits additional residential units wherever ground-related housing is zoned in the city. As such, these permissions will be added into the North Leslie Secondary Plan Area and the West Gormley Secondary Plan Area. These two areas currently have standalone policies that are separate from Part 1 of the official plan, which applies across the rest of the city. While the intent of OPA 23 is to comply with Bill 108 so that additional residential units are permitted, are permitted citywide, there are some limitations. In the Greenbelt Plan area, specifically in the Greenbelt Protected Countryside designation, only one additional residential unit is permitted within an existing single detached dwelling or in a structure that is accessory to the single detached dwelling. However, additional residential units are prohibited in the natural heritage system, even if there are existing single detached dwellings in these areas. In the Oak Ridges Moraine Conservation Plan area, only one additional residential unit is permitted within a single detached dwelling in the Oak Ridges Moraine countryside designation. This permission also applies to the hamlet of Gormley. The limited permissions in the Greenbelt Plan and in the Oak Ridges Moraine Conservation Plan areas 
are due to restrictions found in the provincial plans. Finally, additional residential units are prohibited in hazard lands, hazardous sites, and special policy areas in order to protect public health and safety. And now I'll pass the podium on to Ferdy from Development Zoning to speak about the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. Thank you, Chun. Next slide, please. Okay. In keeping, in keeping with proposed OPA 23, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment will address the following matters. It will provide a definition for additional residential units and amend other definitions where required to ensure consistency across the city's parent zoning bylaws. It will permit citywide one additional residential unit within a single detached dwelling, semi-detached dwelling and townhouses, and one additional residential unit within an accessory structure for a total of two additional residential units per property. Notwithstanding the above, restrictions will be applied on the basis of official plan conformity and the restrictions proposed under OPA 23. In addition, it is proposed that the bylaw will establish a parking rate of one space per additional residential unit and will introduce specific development standards for additional residential units. The following slides show examples of an additional residential unit located within the basement of the primary dwelling and on the upper floor of the primary dwelling. Staff does not propose to regulate the, regula the location of an additional residential unit within the primary dwelling unit. It is believed that the homeowner would know the best configuration for their home. With respect to an additional residential unit located within an accessory detached structure, a combination of existing zoning standards and specific development standards are proposed and shown on the following slides. Next slide, please. In this example, an additional residential unit is shown in the basement of the primary dwelling and one within an accessory detached structure. For safe access, it is proposed that there be an unobstructed yard of a minimum of 1.2 meters between the main entrance of the additional residential unit within both the primary dwelling and the accessory structure to the front lot line. Access to the additional residential unit would not be permitted from within a garage. In addition, the maximum floor area would be limited to 40 square meters which is in keeping with the maximum size of a detached garage under the current zoning bylaw regime and would facilitate a conversion. Maximum lot coverage for all accessory structures, which is currently set at 5%, would remain unchanged. Next slide, please. It is proposed that the height of the detached additional residential unit be limited to 4.2 meters, which would facilitate the conversion of a detached garage to an additional residential unit and would ensure consistency in height for all detached additional residential units. Next slide, please. In this example, an additional residential unit is located in the upper floor of the primary dwelling and above a detached garage with access to a rear lane. As with the previous example, a minimum 1.2 meter unobstructed yard is, made, is, re, is shown. In addition, the maximum floor area would increase to 55 square meters to facilitate an internal stairwell to the additional residential unit located above the garage. Next slide, please. It is proposed that the maximum height of the detached garage within, with the additional residential unit located above be 8.5 meters, which is consistent with the recently approved zoning bylaw 91-13 being the David Dunlop Observatory Zoning Bylaw. And now I'll pass the podium back to Chun to speak to the next steps and recommendations. Next slide, please. Thank you, Ferdy. In terms of timing, we aim to adopt the proposed OPA 23 and zoning bylaw amendment within four months so that additional residential units can be implemented as soon as possible. After this council public meeting, we will gather feedback from city council, the public, as well as our commenting agencies. 
These feedback will be reviewed and any necessary revisions to the proposed amendments will be made over January to February in the new year. Staff will then bring forward the updated OPA 23 and zoning bylaw amendment to council in late February of 2021 for a decision. It is noted that York Region has exempted their approval authority for OPA 23 because the proposed amendments are deemed a local matter and they comply with provincial directions. Once OPA 23 and the zoning bylaw amendment is passed, the only party who can appeal the decision of city council will be the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. After the, this appeal period and subject to no appeals from the minister, the city will be able to implement OPA 23 and the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. With regards to public engagement, we want to note that besides today's council public meeting, a public survey, a public survey on additional residential units was issued on November 6, and it will run until December 16. The results of this survey will be considered as a part of the feedback for the proposed OPA 23 and zoning bylaw amendment. Also, Staff has posted the draft OPA 23 on the city's website, and the draft zoning bylaw amendment will be made available on the same website prior to the next council meeting on additional residential units. Next slide, please. And lastly, we'll end this presentation with a recommendation to council that council receive the report titled SRPI.20 dot zero zero nine for information only. We respectfully ask that any comments regarding the proposed OPA 23 and the zoning bylaw amendment be referred back to staff. And that concludes our presentation. Thanks very much for your time. Nope, thank you very much. Um, as we move forward, we have uh, two items of correspondence which are in the agenda as you're aware of, so they'll be going to council or they'll be going to staff. And then we have two delegations that are here with us this evening. And the first is uh, Clovis Grant from 360 Kids. Mr. Grant, there you are, sir. Yes. Uh, can I go ahead? Welcome. Yes, please. Okay, wonderful. Um, my name is Clovis Grant, and I'm the CEO for 360 Kids, which is a homeless youth organization here in York Region. And we've been doing our work for over 30 years and serve approximately 4,000 young people uh, throughout all of York Region. Our flagship location is at The Hub in Richmond Hill, where we serve approximately 1,000 youth each year. And we're the only emergency housing program for youth in the south part of, of the region. And uh, our mission is very simple, uh, helping homeless young people find stability. And we believe that every youth deserves a safe place to call home. And, and we've been very successful in helping young people find meaningful employment. In fact, about 75% of the youth in our employment programs of, of find and maintain uh, jobs or return to school. Uh, we've, we're helping young people graduate high school, about uh, 50 youth, um, through the, the HUB program in the last four years have actually graduated high school through uh, the, the, the work we, we do in partnership with the, the school board. Uh, we provide a range of housing programs from emergency, anti-human trafficking work, uh, night stop work, which I'll talk about shortly, as well as transitional housing. And uh, of course, a whole host of um, health and well-being supports. Really at the heart of the work that we do is housing. And that's why I'm in favor of these new amendments that have been discussed. Uh, one of the, the, the important things, uh, one of the myths that I wanted to uh, speak about uh, when it comes to homelessness is that for, for some people, they think young people leave home for the glory of the streets. The reality is that young people leave home because the streets are safer than their home. A very sad situation in, in fact, because we know that the streets are not safe. Uh, when young people are on the streets, there's higher victimization. 
their how their health outcomes are poor. Uh, their mental health outcomes are poor. Uh, suicide attempts, overdose. That is the reality of life on the streets. And if COVID uh, did anything, it showed us the importance of housing. How do you stay home? How do you do all the public health measures when you have no place to call home? As Chun shared just now, housing is unaffordable throughout the province and certainly here in York region. And part of the reason is a lack of stock. Organizations like ours serving low income populations are always having to be creative to help add stock to reduce likelihood of continued homelessness. And uh, I'll just share uh, quickly uh, some of the things that we've done just because the stock is so low. Uh, we, we have a, an innovative program we've adopted from the UK, which is our night stop program. And it's using existing stock, people with empty bedrooms in their homes, we recruit and train them to be hosts and they provide short-term housing for young people so that we're not adding more to the, um, the, the, the shelters. A second example, uh, uh, to, to add stock is looking at heritage homes or uh, vacant homes, homes that are just sitting empty um, and uh, working in with partners uh, to convert those into housing. Our last example um, is uh, garage inserts. Um, it's a modular unit in a garage that comes with a sink, toilet, insulated walls, and it connects with the existing water, pipes, and electrical uh, systems. Um, but it's a separate unit. Such an idea um, is a challenge with the current bylaws and which is why these, uh, I'm in support of these changes because they will increase stock and with that will come a reduction in rents overall. Right now, because of the supply is so limited that the prices can go high and that's totally out of uh, the reach for many of our young people. So really, these changes, I believe, reflect the reality of today's family, provides housing for all ages and stages. It's a win-win I see because uh, really uh, these changes will help add extra income uh, to, to homeowners and at the same time reduce the likelihood of more people becoming homeless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Grant. Appreciate your comments. They will go on the record, sir. Uh, the next Delegate uh, is John John Lee. Uh, Mr. Is Mr. Lee here because his his topic is uh, is not about uh, our secondary uh, additions units. It's about as I can see it here. John, there you are. I yeah. see it. It's the same uh, one that you spoke about before talking uh, about. Uh, we are passing it. There's nothing in there about the housing, sir. So I, I, I just want to make sure that we don't have the second story of, of, of what the story that you have is the fact that I, I actually, um, our priority is to bring more jobs, not population, etc. Sir. Yeah, I, uh, I have a, a basically slides. Can you uh, actually display slides so I can start speaking? So are you going to say the same thing as we did the last time? This isn't the topic of today. Yeah, basically, I think this apply to not for this project, also to other ones. So I'm speak on behalf of the Richmond Hill Umbrella Resident Group. So I'm not speaking for myself. I'm speak on behalf of a group of resident associations. Next okay. slide. And the topic today is additional residence units, secondary suites. Yeah, next slide, please. Yeah, <laughs> since the pandemic, Richmond Hill Council has passed many residential monster towers, despite the strong opposite opposition from residents. Some councillors have been trying to convince the public that Richmond Hill desperately need residential housing, which is a top priority yeah, of Richmond Hill. Is this Quite true? Order, Mr. Chair. Let's, 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 know, let's, excuse let's, me. Next, please. Thank you. Next, Mr. Next, Lee, next. please, yeah. Mr. Lee. Yeah. Mr. Lee, sorry, this is not the topic that, that we ha have here with us. I have to tell you that it's not about, you're, you're, it's the same one and I appreciate the fact I've seen it a, a couple no, of times. No, it's, it's not the same one. Actually, uh, this is different. 
If you see, have, have you seen the table? I, I, I displayed next page. Why don't you want me to show the table? Because it's not doing anything. Yes, it, it, make, it makes matter. It's, sir, I'm, I, I, and you know, this is the quality of life in Richmond Hill is rapidly deteriorating. And then you've got the collisions and all of those. This yes, is also associated together. I will explain. Can you please let me finish and then you will make a judgment, okay? Because I haven't explained how do you know what I will speak? Mr. Mayor, I'm looking, I'm looking at the paper that you're reading. So Mr. Uh, Mayor? Not, not that page. And the next page has a lot of data. I will explain. Okay. Again, sir, it must be about, <laughs> how many times do I have to say it? The expanded permissions for additional residents in second units in the houses in Richmond Hill or in the new houses in Richmond Hill. Yes, it's related. I, I don't think it's necessary. That's why I want you data to show. Well, everything is related, but we're not, we're talking about a specific- That's item. okay. Yeah. Can I, you please I, let me finish my speaking only another three minutes, okay? Thank you. I heard, okay. I heard this presentation, Mr. Mayor. I'll, I, I'll be bowing out, thank you. So what are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Why don't you, I register, I, with the right procedures, and now I'm allowed to speak. Why, I think you, you are not let me to speak. What are your freedom, those factors? We've got a topic tonight, and that's what I'm trying to point out to you, is that for you to discuss that topic. Yes, I think the papers the that you have right here, that, that you've, what you've- Essential units, right? I think my documents show that it's not priority for Richmond Hill to, I think have more population. So I will, my data will speak everything. Why don't you let me show a speak and not show the data, I explain. Okay, finish with your three minutes then, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, some counselor has been trying to convince the public that Richmond Hill desperately need residential housing, but the fact is not. Let's see this table. This is based on the population and the job ratio. York region has a perfect job ratios. Basically, 50% of population has job in York region. So it means two to one. Let's see our neighbors, Maham and Wang. Both have more jobs than population. Among all top five, five cities in, uh, in York region, Richmond Hill is the only city far behind. One has more than 60,000 jobs. So it means more people go to those who want to, to have jobs. But Richmond Hill already shot of 30,000 jobs. That's four years ago's data. So right now it's even worse. So does this make sense? During the past six months, how many high-rise residential units are approved? And how many jobs opportunities you, you created? And also see the family income. Richmond Hill is the poorest, I think, uh, uh, med medium family income. In in these top five cities, and also the second in the whole York regions. So if you bring a lot of, I think, high-rise condos, those like the third units, that's pretty much most of them low-income families. So are you bringing Richmond Hill to more poverty? Please see the next page. You can see the traffic. From 2012 to 2018, well, that has nothing to do with that. It has yes, nothing. I'll explain. Because most over 30,000 Richmond Hill people has no job in our city. They have to go outside. That's why a lot of traffic between cities. You can see York region, every municipal, the traffic accident ratio dropped significantly during the past eight years. Richmond Hill is the only municipal increase. In 2012, we have the same traffic ratio as other parties of York region. Right now, we are 180% as of our neighbors almost doubled in the past eight years. Is this, is this change can be stopped? Why you keep bringing more residential units instead of jobs? Next page, next page, please. If our limited lands are all used to build residential high rise, where's land can create jobs and improve our income? After the four year term, what kind of Richmond here will you live with us? Apart okay. from who? Job opportunities, poverty, and the traffic congestion. What else can you bring to us? 
We hope you can submit a satisfying answer to voters in the 2012 yeah. election. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments. They'll go on the record. Mr. Chan, thank you. All right, we are now, um, I think what we have, I'm sure we have some questions of our, of our staff here. So can, can we get uh, the staff, SRP 2009, the staff report with respect to the municipal initial, it's 3.1, so that everything comes forward, the bylaws to permit additional residential units and the two count numbers be received for information purposes only and that all the comments be referred back to the staff. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that item? Councilor Corrali, Councilor Barros, thank you very much. All those in favor, opposed, carried, thank you. Okay, now questions or comment, questions if somebody has any for, because we've got the a number of, uh, of information here that's gonna come back to us that we saw on the presentations. Councilor Pirelli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, this is uh, five years in the making. I believe, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council, that the province announced that secondary suites became legal back in, uh, I think it's 2014 or 2013. Uh, so contrary to what uh, some people might think, uh, this isn't our choice as a municipality. Uh, the province has made it legal and it is legal. Uh, our job is only to work around the framework uh, for how we want it uh, rolled out. In other words, parking spaces, size, this, that, and everything else. Um, just uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to uh, Mr. Toniolo, uh, am I correct that the province's expectation was for us to actually have this rolled out by 2015 originally. If my memory serves me correct, I believe that was March of 2015 was the original target date. Mr. Tony Lee? Hello? Am I on? Yes, yes you are. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the province did pass legislation in the past regarding this uh, through the staff report, um, but the most recent changes occurred in the last few years and we're reacting to that as a result to allow for the second and third unit. So the additional was for the third unit in, in the changes? That's correct. And it uh, deals with parking and it, um, yeah, it principally deals with the, the parking matter and that third unit. Right. And, and so just to be clear for everybody watching at home and the delegates, uh, this is not a decision being made by this council uh, to allow the suites. We're just working at how we implement it. That is correct. Uh, perfect. Uh, look, I, as a residential landlord, pro, uh, residential provider uh, that I've been involved in for 20 years, um, I see the need for uh, more affordable uh, type housing. Um, you know, the lower we can get the, the cost to live in the region, the better it is for everybody. And, um, you know, as Mr. Lee stated, uh, I know his, uh, his speech wasn't about this topic, but he's right. There is some relation. Uh, he's right about the jobs. And it's very difficult to pe for people to get jobs in the region at, um, at the, uh, the lower end of the job spectrum when they can't afford to live here and they'd have to commute. And I don't know how far they'd have to go in order to be able to uh, afford something so that they could live on the minimum wage. So, you know, having those uh, affordable options, more affordable options are, are good for everybody. And I look forward to uh, going over the report in great detail. I'm sure I'll have some questions of Mr. Toniolo and, and Ms. Kersel. Uh, coming forward, and uh, we look forward to working with you towards uh, a nice uh, OPA. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Silovitz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you to staff for a very, very good staff report. Um, um, it was comprehensive, but it was also um, easy to read and understand. So thank you so much for that. 
and to the delegates who stepped forward this evening. Um, thank you so much. Your words, your words always matter. I just have a few questions uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to staff. Whomever wants to answer, I'm not quite sure. They're, they're a mix. Um, so my first question is with relation to garbage collection, how do we, how do you meld this with the, with the bylaws that um, control garbage collection? Because once you have another one or two families living in someone's, living in a residential house, and we all know it, it happens already, but how there's a limit to garbage collect, the garbage bags that can be collected. So how do we plan to look at this um, in the light of day? Through you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Commissioner Kwan. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that's a very good point, uh, Councillor Silovitz, and it's all about the implementation details. And certainly we will take that comment and uh, talk to the respective staff who deal with uh, waste disposal and uh, provide an answer in the upcoming report on how we, how we best deal with that issue. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and, and relative to that, so probably again, through you, Mr. Mayor, probably to, to Commissioner Kwan, um, front lot coverage for a driveway. We, there are bylaws that also govern that. So uh, a person who owns um, a house uh, can only have um, a certain amount of the front yard covered it by paving. So um, that, that's another issue that I think we need to uh, also address in, in implementation. Again, the melding of different bylaws that, that need to be um, uh, initiated. Commissioner. Mr. Kwan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, certainly there will be a, um, a number of design criteria identified through the zoning bylaw. The essence, though, of the of the additional units is, is effectively not to change the fabric of the neighborhood, but to integrate it. So, um, hopefully, we, that doesn't mean wholesale changes to the design criteria, which really set the uh, the standards for the character of the neighborhood. So, it's it's really to integrate, not necessarily change. But certainly, we will take that comment under advisement as well. Right, thank you. I appreciate that because I mean, in newer houses, they have there is a, a, typically, you know, a much a much smaller driveway. In the older houses that we have in, you know, some of in Ward Five, some of the Richville houses, they have very long driveways and they can accommodate more cars. But I think when we're looking at uh, the the new builds, where they have much smaller, uh, much uh, smaller in length. Uh, driveways, even in woods. I, I, I believe that we need to watch that as well because um, it is possible. We get it now anyway. I, I had a I had a complaint a couple of days ago about someone who's apparently um, extended their driveway and completely paved over their front yard. So so these are issues that I think we also we also need to uh, be very aware of. Um, and again, to Commissioner Kwan, through you, Mr. Mayor, there's nothing in that I could see in this particular staff report, which um, addressed building code. So um, how, how are we going to address that as well with this new, with this amendment? Because I imagine that the, we, we have to be um, beholden to all the building codes uh, that we have in place um, locally and provincially um, in order to you know, either turn a basement into an apartment or two apartments, some people do that, or to turn um, a, a coach house or a, a detached garage into, into a dwelling unit. So um, how does the building code meld with all of this? Commissioner Kwan. Hey, Mr. Mayor, unfortunately my system froze, so I'm not sure I, could, I caught everything uh, in your question, Councillor Silovitz, but if I, uh, you tell me if I- Somebody I'll, else can answer. So in, uh, in, um, just to start off with, the, the, zone, the, the amendments we're putting forward are permissive in terms of allowing additional units throughout the municipality. However, they also will be establishing other criteria with respect to controlling 
where those units would be located. So while it's an overarching permission, there are other regulations going to be in the zoning bylaw, which don't necessarily imply that every household would be entitled to have the additional unit. So for instance, your reference to parking, if you don't have sufficient parking, you would not be able, you would not qualify for that additional unit. Okay. So it's, it's um, perhaps not as scary as it may seem that it's just, you know, we're doubling the, the number of units across the municipality. Uh, with respect to the other departments, those are other regulations that still must be considered. We are only dealing with the zoning aspect here today. Uh, certainly the building code act and the regulations under under for fire protection and public safety are also in, um, have to be considered primarily through the issuance of the building permit so again while the zoning may be permissive it does not guarantee a right that you would be entitled to having the additional unit if you could not satisfy those other regulations okay thank, thank you. you thank you commissioner kwan just a couple more questions to you mr uh -huh. mayor um we are currently undergoing Zone Richmond Hill um, consultations and, and policy discussions, as well as, of course, our new official plan. And this is an official plan amendment to our parent uh, official plan, to our in-place official plan. So um, can you tell me, through you, Mr. Mayor, to the commissioner, where does this, where is this going to fit in with Zone Richmond Hill and our revised official plan? Through you, Mr. Mayor, it was a, an integral component of Zone Richmond Hill. However, given the urgency to deal with this, uh, given the provincial mandates and the regulations, we've extracted it uh, out as a separate component to deal with immediately. But uh, certainly over the long term, we would reintegrate the provisions of this bylaw into the overall new comprehensive zoning bylaw. Okay, thank you, very, thank, you. I, yeah. thank you, I appreciate all of that. And um, I, the only thing I would uh, just end with is that uh, this is Richmond Hill, rents are very high. So this is not, perhaps we need to, we need to look at this very carefully as not, not specifically affordable housing, but increasing our housing stock. So I just, you know, given with uh, what, mm -hmm. um, Clovis Grant was discussing, we just, I think we need to approach this in a, in a very careful way, policy-wise. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor DePaulo. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my, uh, my, my question is about the references to the Oak Ridge Marine, uh, the change, changes, <clears throat> changes to the Oak Ridge Marine Act. Uh, I mean, the lands within Richmond Hill that are in the Marine. Now, uh, I guess first I'll ask, is this uh, official plan amendment only affect suites and uh, secondary suites and additional r residential units on the existing structures? Or it just sounded like you're, you're limiting structures that are able to be built on. It, it doesn't do that, does it? Mr. Kwan, please go um, ahead. Through you, Mr. Mayor, if I interpret the question correctly, it provides for a variety of options to allow secondary suites, whether they be built within an existing residential, single family, semi or townhouse, or it's a separate accessory building on the property. And as an example, for instance, on the David Dunlap Observatory zoning bylaw, we have allowed secondary suites to be located above a detached garage in a laneway condition already. So I hopefully that answers the question unless there's, I've missed the mark. Okay, it, well, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't affect the land assembly of lots and, and applications to, to, to rezone and intensify any areas. It just sounded like there may be a special clause here for, for West Cornley Hamlet. Uh, well, I think I think the question actually was, Deputy, was the fact can new housing bring forward additional residential units and and that not not just taking bu buildings and houses that are already here to be changed. 
right? I thought that's what your question was. Well, that's what my question is. This, this amendment only affects existing houses. You're just regulating what can and can't be done in existing houses. It doesn't change any of our other um, planning processes. Through you, Mr. Mayor, no, it doesn't affect any of the other policy initiatives by the city. However, where there is new permitted low density residential development permitted or approved, these provisions would apply to allow okay. the secondary units in those areas. Okay, Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, thank you. Councillor West. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Um, and thank you to the uh, delegates and thank you to staff for putting this together. Um, I, I do agree that this, um, th what we're doing here essentially is something that we are dictated to have to do given the uh, provincial direction. Um, I have had fairly extensive conversations with staff over the last little while about this. And so I don't actually have that many questions, but given that this is a, an opportunity for um, input, I'd like to provide some. Um, I think our job here is, it's not a question whether we have to do this or, or not, we do have to do this, but the question is um, making sure that we get it right. And um, I think there is quite clearly a need for additional um, housing choices. And, and this is definitely something that uh, it can be done to help to uh, help folks when they need uh, this type of housing. Um, so I, I, I think that if it's done properly, it will be a positive thing for our community. But I think that the important part is to make sure that we do it in a way that integrates well with the communities. Um, in our official plan um, update meeting we had the other day, a point that I thought was very interesting that was made by the speaker was that, you know, the importance of whatever changes we make to the community, whether they be, be big, small, or somewhere in between, is that we want to protect the things that make Richmond Hill great. And uh, I think our existing communities are probably among those things. So um, when, I, when I was thinking about the implications of this, and I think Mr. Kwan just a minute ago said very clearly that this is a overall permissive thing, but not all units will be able to uh, accommodate a secondary unit due to a number of different factors. But, you know, some of the things that I think of right away when I think of this is parking. And, um, you know, the I know that there are going to be areas in my ward and, and other places in Richmond Hill too, where um, putting a second unit into an existing structure is going to cause parking problems. And I think we need to have very cl clear rules and regulations around that because there's only so much capacity in some areas to, ex to uh, handle that kind of parking. I think that the there also needs to be, um, you know, for pretty specific guidelines around secondary structures because I, I'm even thinking of, um, you know, the ability to put uh, water and sewers into, say, a garage or a, a, a structure in somebody's backyard. Um, you know, I think about my own lot, there, there'd be a pretty small setback between my house and the, and the house next door to me to get a sewer connection in. So, you know, clearly, I, mean, I know staff will look at that type of thing, but I think that needs to be you know, fairly clearly communicated in, in the bylaw and so on. Um, I did have one question. Uh, on page 11 in the staff report, there's um, talk about uh, a zero parking requirement in a number of different areas. And I think the, the reference I'm looking at specifically talks about an area in Oak Ridges. Um, can somebody explain to me from staff uh, what that means? That the, it's about the third or fourth um, uh, paragraph down. Three, Mr. Um, Mayor, the, the regulations uh, do allow us to have zero parking provisions in areas where there are no current parking regulations, but um, I'll turn it over to Shelley Cham to uh, the manager of the zoning project and she can elaborate. Hi, three, Mr. Mayor. Um, so the regulations are specific in that if the zoning bylaw itself does not prescribe a parking requirement, um, we cannot actually require parking for those properties. Uh, the two bylaw in question are relatively old bylaws um, that don't have established parking requirements in them. Oh, okay. I thought the opposite, that they were some sort of a new bylaw. Um, okay, I, 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 
don't profess to understand that fully then, but uh, that did catch my attention because I think that if we're going to be adding units to an area that, that doesn't require additional parking to accommodate those units, I, I would be concerned about that. But again, I'm trying to give input here. I mean, I, I know staff will take a look at that. Um, I think one of the things that we are seeing right now is there's a lot of um, uh, non-clarity about uh, whether units in Richmond Hill are legal or whether they're not. Um, and I, I do look forward to having something in place that provides clarity to that. But I also think that once we implement this, we are going to need to do a significant public education campaign because it doesn't deal, you know, the, the whole issue doesn't deal with just the zoning bylaw and official plan amendment, but it'll also deal significantly with um, the um, uh, a building code. And, you know, there's a number of different interfaces that people are going to have to understand. And I, I suspect that we're probably going to see a, uh, a significant amount of uh, enforcement and education that will be needed. Um, yeah. I have one other question, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Um, have we, this is related uh, to this issue, but have we ever uh, talked about the possibility uh, of having some sort of a vacancy tax where um, buildings that are not occupied for long periods of time could be taxed to encourage them to be rented as opposed to sit idle? Oh, come on. Excuse me, Councillor Barrows, no please. Anything. It's a question. It's Excuse a question. Me. It's a question. And I, I've okay. had this question from residents, Mr. Barrow. So I, I Okay, I thank you. Carry on. Ask it. Don't take on each other, please. Who's who's the question to? Anybody that would like to answer it. It's just a question as to whether we've considered okay. it. Mr. Kwan. It's a good idea. Can you direct us anywhere? Um Certainly, it's something we can look at. I'm not sure how much information we have available tonight. Perhaps Director. No, Lee I, I, I think it's in. these are these are questions that we can ask today and have answers and information as as we go down on the the next steps. That's fine. The reason the reason for the question is that um, there are a number of, of buildings that are not being used. Yes, and, no, we understand. That. You know, if, if there was an incentive for them to be able to be used, that could help to contribute towards the uh, additional uh, unit. So I understand that's my time. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Mr. Mayor. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, Councillor Chan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, actually, a number of points I want to raise, I have already been raised by speakers before me. Um, but for the record, um, this is a time to have comments. So that's why I want to put my comments forward. And first of all, thank you, the uh, staff for uh, putting on a very comprehensive and uh, someone comment, uh, easy to re report and setting out all the background, the changes, and of course, the delegates uh, that who are uh, certainly um, passionate about this housing issue. And one aspect is already raised. Uh, I do have concern and perhaps uh, Mr. Kwang and staff and Commission Kwang will be looking at down the road, how that really reconcile as just uh, brought up the seal parking requirement as well as a currently the front yard uh, 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 bylaw. And because in my ward, I, I have been getting uh, a, 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 not a big number, but some complaints about that. Uh, it appears to be uh, people who are actual tenants of nearby properties actually even park on someone, the neighbor's, um, oh, the neighbor's uh, driveway. Uh, and of course we say, well, you can, you can buy permit, but, but anyway, I want, uh, that issue be a look at and really uh, how to reconcile that from an enforcement standpoint and how to balance that. Uh, I know it's a challenge and that's why I want to bring it up. Uh, the other one is that I'm taking note about there will be other regulations, not only on the building code, but five safety um, because five safety is very um, uh, uh, safety issue for the uh, uh, particular neighborhoods and particularly as I understand the definition, the secondary suite or any other name by it would have to have a kitchen. So that would be the potential concern about uh, fire hazard that certainly need to be controlled. Um, 
And the public education is certainly uh, very important, uh, even though I understand, as the report said quite right, um, the province make it legal, particularly now just last year in Bill 108, and we are to implement the rollout. Um, I think Council West just mentioned that but seems to be still quite a bit of confusion about whether this is legal or not legal. And uh, in the past, I do have residents in my ward who actually tried to demonstrate the bylaw that they actually have a legal one, uh, not last year, but before last, because they have been uh, consistently ranked in our unit uh, before 1996. So, um, so that's a, a continuous challenge to educate the people about now things have changed. And the other thing too is that given the um, very diverse nature of our population here, I know it's not for planning, but in the future report that for the public education, I would strongly encourage to be consider uh, looking at the demographics, uh, the other most spoken language in which many other than English would be considered factor in, in uh, working with communication to come out and roll out a, a public education campaign. So uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor, for me to uh, share my comments and thoughts in here and uh, looking forward to the next stage. Oh, thank you. Um, Councilor Munch, yeah, go ahead. I was oh, just because I, I just had a note here that I wanted to get in, but that's okay. Go ahead, sir. Um, good day. Thank you for the report. Um, I'd just like to get some clarification on a couple of things. On page three of the report, uh, it says, and I quote, from lands which are zoned for residential use, and this is the, like it follows the third bullet. Is that right? Sorry. Yeah, third bullet. From lands which are zoned for residential use, but located within the lands designated natural heritage system within the North Leslie Secondary Plan and natural core within the Greenbelt Protected Countryside. So the Oak Ridge Marine has four classifications, that being core, linkage, settlement, and countryside. So here we're saying, I don't understand what this says, and natural core within the Greenbelt Protected Countryside. I think the language there needs to be a little bit adjusted uh, because the natural core is one of the four, as is Greenbelt Protected Countryside. So the natural core is not within the countryside. The countryside and the core are two parts of the plan. So I'll just uh, that's something that kind of rose up. I think there was a misprint um, on that particular point on, on where, or, you know, that's where I'd like to go. Just make sure you clear that up. Um, another thing the, the area is of concern is clearly when we're talking about our standard um, for stormwater management, as we start putting in these secondary parking areas, and I've mentioned permeable later, and I've been, I've been working on this for a, a little while, it's a real big concern on where that water and how that's gonna impact our stormwater management and the impact on our infrastructure. And uh, that is something where uh, I, I intend to move a motion uh, sometime relatively soon once I do a little more research and, and engage with others including staff. But the, the concern we have here is if we're going to be having secondary suites, there's a big chunk of existing residential um, people that really aren't looking to have that kind of thing in our neighborhood. We have to make sure that as we're putting restrictions throughout the report that say, well, some areas we're going to be careful and other areas we're not. There are some areas that are older that have large lots. They're going to allow a larger parking. And, and that criteria of, of moving this type of density into residential neighborhoods is a real concern of mine and, and many people uh, within. Uh, I think we need to have a real wholesome discussion as to how exactly we're going to grow. Further to Mr. Lee, um, I do believe the mayor was correct on how he, he ruled there, but you know, Mr. Lee was saying, how are we going to be governing and where are we going? And it's a question I ask. I don't know the answer. So I, I applaud staff for the report. It's, uh, we have to engage with the provincial legislation. We have to provide more housing and more choices. We have to look at how we're doing it. I applaud staff on, on trying to protect the, the Green Belt and the Oak Ridge Marine. I think we really need to make sure that we do that in exchange for try to get uh, growth where we need growth to be with our infrastructure of Young Street and whatever. So I look forward to seeing a kind of report and, and trying to find the balance. And I know it's a very tough task to put on and to deal with all the multiple people who have multiple opinions. So permeable nature with regard to the 
stormwater management's a concern and the transition into neighborhoods um, and how we're going to engage in those parking area and how we're going to affect our municipalities well being is, is a real concern and engagement uh, you know as much as possible with with as many stakeholders as possible to come back to the report. I look forward to hearing that. So those are my comments and I thank everyone uh, for, for being here. Thank you. Um, Councilor Barros, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I had a resident contact me. They had looked at this and the resident had asked, okay, if I go and add a secondary suite to my home, I'm gonna increase my income and I'm gonna to have to claim that on my income tax and I'll get taxed at the provincial and federal level. The question was, when I go and do this to my home, how is MPACT gonna look at my home? Are they gonna immediately say, oh, you've added another bathroom, another bedroom, you've added more livable space, we're now gonna increase the value of your home and therefore increase the taxes to the city? Is this something that, um, has been thought out. Is there any kind of um, workings with impact to as to as not to um, to hurt the individual that's trying to actually help? Uh, maybe their family, but they're also trying to help the community. You know, we've heard a lot of pleas from people saying increase the stock. Um, so maybe, Mr. Kwan, is there any kind of through the provincial legislation that speaks to that with impact? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I am not personally aware, but uh, I, I may ask staff, but in any event, uh, we are here to talk about the zoning provisions um, only. So uh, what the other regulatory provisions and how they're assessed, excusing the pun, um, you know, certainly we can look into a little further and bring us some additional information, but uh, I'm not sure if anybody on my staff has anything else to add at that point. Um, and and that, that's fine. Thank you. Commissioner, you can take the comment from my resident and we can pass it on through staff and you can get back to me later. Uh, the other thing, and someone else kind of touched on this, um, but the, the, the question is, is real. We now go and increase our, our stock and we have an extra burden on our, mm -hmm. our, our schools. We have an extra burden on our garbage system. Uh, we're not gonna have, I don't believe we're gonna have a burden on our parking because I believe when this whole thing plays out, people that put in a secondary suite are gonna be able to facilitate the extra parking. It's not gonna be a situation um, where people are gonna be parking all over the streets because there's no parking available in driveways. I, I don't envision that for a second, nor do I think we should, we should put up with that, um, except in cases where perhaps where we've got the zoning where we can't stop it. But other than that, I think we should. So the, um, the, the concern there is, do we have any mechanism to deal with those additional burdens? Do we tell these people with a secondary suite, you have to facilitate the amount of garbage for that municipal address? Mm -hmm. Or do we then say, oh, we recognize that there's a, a legitimate additional suite. So now that address can put out twice the amount of garbage. How, how does that work out? Through you, Mr. Mayor, again, um, we will take that comment back. It's a very good question about the practicality of the implementation um, as far as waste disposal is concerned. Uh, with respect to uh, the additional loading on the school populations, uh, certainly we will vet all of these uh, amendments through the our public agency partners and to ensure that everything is uh, workable and they understand the impacts that the amendments could have on their programming. To finish it off, Mr. Mayor, the residents I've spoken to, they're not against this, but they've got concerns on how it's gonna change the look and feel of their neighborhood. Uh, they recognize there's some people that are already doing it um, and without proper regulation, it can be problematic. But they also, I mean, we've got very specific communities within Oak Ridges where they're currently fighting to protect the, 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 the strength and the character of their community. And, and this could in fact change that. They saw it as um, severances changing the character of the community. The next thing they, they, they're, they're now concerned with is no severances, 
we're just putting another household in the same house. So uh, there's concern, but I think if done properly and thoughtfully, I, I think people will come on board and, and they'll, they'll work through this in a productive way. Uh, so those are the comments that I, I committed to passing on tonight, Mr. Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity. Nope, thank you. Um, just, just a couple of comments on mine before we, uh, we finish is, and I think um, Kelvin's kind of hit it off that there's a number of practical aspects that, that we've been dealing with here as the parking and the private entrances and the, how many units are in the separated buildings and those type of things. But we've also realized in our discussion this evening, we have many, many questions um, not, not coming from us directly, but certainly indirectly when people say, well, how can we do this? Exactly as uh, Deputy Kapalas was, you know, can, can you do it in a new house or do you have to you do it in a house that's already existing? So all of those things are something that, uh, that I'm sure we're all looking forward to on the next steps of, uh, of this venture, <laughs> which I'll call it. So with that, um, can we just, we're all right. All those, can we, uh, we got a mover? We got a second or all those in favor? Can I ask one quick question before we- oh, please, yeah, please. Just quickly, um, you had mentioned, or one of the staff had mentioned that we're doing a, a survey right now. Um, and I don't expect to get the results of the survey yet, but can, is there any indication as to how it's going? Like uh, the level of public input so far? Okay, well, we can. Um, Judy, Mr. Mayor, I'll redirect it to, uh, okay. to perhaps, uh, Sibel to talk about that, but I, I, don't, I don't know if it would be appropriate to reveal any preliminary yeah. results. In fact, it's still still got time in it, right? I know. Lots of time to go. The trending. Yes. Uh, so the as we mentioned in the presentation, the survey's been up uh, since the beginning of November. We actually have had not a lot of um, responses as of yet. So we're hoping that this meeting tonight might um, generate some more interest, and so that we can hear more from from the public. Um, the survey is available from the Affordable Housing Strategy webpage and the zoning uh, webpage as well. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Mr. Thank you, Mayor. okay. All right, we ready to go? Oh, I'm sorry, Deputy Preferly. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just uh, following up on the Councillor West's question, uh, the survey, which uh, survey company created that and was it vetted by our staff or was this just something we put together? And, you know, the public has always criticized some people for putting out surveys that weren't done <laughs> by professional corporations. So can, if you could just let us know which professional corporation put out this survey, that would really be helpful. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I'll let uh, Ms. Von Carousel, our reply so the survey is an it's an online survey we can you access it from our website it's not uh, we're not calling people and, and asking them the questions uh, and the questions were developed in consultation with our affordable housing strategy con consultant as well as uh, Gladkey who did the analysis in terms of secondary units so it's a it's a joint effort between um, those two consultants as well as staff at the city so through you, Mr. Mayor, so there was no survey company that actually did the survey. It was just consultants and staff. That's correct. Oh, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Once again, all those in favor <laughs> of adjournment, mover and seconder as Councillor Borelli, Councillor Barrows. So we've got that. All those in favor, opposed, carried. Thank you all very much.